Hey, in the video today I want to speak about training programming specific for women. I was asked so many times how can I adjust my training program to my menstrual cycle. Usually I refer to the Bayesian Bodybuilding webpage because there are so many great articles about women and strength training. One of them is an article about menstrual cycle training periodization for women. I will link it in the description down below together with other great articles from the Bayesian Bodybuilding page. And in this video I will just give you a short overview over this topic. First of all, it is important to know that the menstrual cycle is divided into two phases. There is a follicular phase and there is a luteal phase. Both phases are separated by the ovulation. During the follicular phase, the hormone estrogen is pretty high and during the luteal phase, progesterone is higher than estrogen. To make the issue a bit simpler, Estrogen is in general considered to be an anabolic hormone, so it helps you to grow muscle and progesterone is considered to be a catabolic hormone, so it is actually more involved into muscle degradation. Research studies that looked at strength differences throughout the menstrual cycle have actually found that there isn't lots of variation throughout the cycle. Some studies have found that the strength levels are lower during the period, a possible reason for this may be that some women don't feel really great when they have their periods. That's why the gym performance also suffers. However, when we look at the muscle gains and not just the strength level, then everything changes. There were a few research studies that have actually found that when women train with a higher frequency during the first half of the menstrual cycle, so during the follicular phase, then they can gain more strength than if they would train with higher frequency during the second half of the cycle during the luteal phase. This also makes sense because during the follicular phase you have a higher level of the anabolic hormone estrogen and during the luteal phase the estrogen levels are lower but the progesterone levels are higher and progesterone is a more catabolic hormone. For this reason it makes sense to train each muscle group you want to grow four to five times a week during the follicular phase. You can use the second part of the menstrual cycle for deload or if you would like to take a few rest days extra. Also, it makes sense to support the muscle gains in the follicular phase with sufficient energy intake. That's why it doesn't make really sense to cut weight in the follicular phase if you want to grow muscle. You can use the second half of the menstrual cycle for cutting and the first half of the menstrual cycle for muscle gain in energy surplus or at least energy maintenance. Structuring training programs this way doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be lazy in the second half of the menstrual cycle. It is just about having more volume and higher training frequency in the first half to get optimal results. Now a few practical tips how to determine when to increase and when to decrease the training frequency. The length of the menstrual cycle varies among the women. It can be as short as 22 days or as long as 36 days. It depends on the individual. As you can see here, in the first seven days of the menstrual cycle, the estrogen levels are pretty low, so it doesn't necessarily make sense to train with a really high training frequency. The first day of the menstrual cycle starts with the menstrual bleeding, so the first day of the period. This means you can start training with increased training frequency 7 days after you got your period. Then you need to determine when to stop. To do this you have to take your individual length of the menstrual cycle and divide it by 2. Let's take 28 days as an example. The middle of the menstrual cycle are 14 days. And as you can see here, around ovulation the estrogen levels are still pretty high and they go down just two days after. For this reason I would just take the middle of the menstrual cycle and add two days on top. So this means you have to start training with increased training frequency seven days after your menstrual bleeding started and stop two days after the middle of your menstrual cycle. Then there is something women should consider who take oral contraceptive pills. There are two different types of pills. There is a monophasic pill and multiphasic pill, like D or triphasic pill. For a multiphasic pill, the hormone concentration in the tablets vary throughout the menstrual cycle. The multiphasic pill mimics the natural hormone production. This means you have a higher estrogen concentration in the first half of the cycle when you take the first half of the pills and then a higher progesterone concentration 
for the second half of the cycle. If you take a multiphasic pills, all the guidelines I spoke about apply to you. However, there is also a different kind of pill, which is a monophasic pill. This means that the hormone levels of estrogen and progesterone stay the same throughout the menstrual cycle. If you take a monophasic pill, you don't need to apply menstrual cycle periodization for your training and just schedule it to your convenience. If you don't know if your pill is monophasic or multiphasic, just google the name and you will find the answer. Don't be confused if you don't find estrogen and progesterone as active ingredients on the package because often in pills some compounds are used that are really similar to estrogen and progesterone. They have a really similar structure but slightly different names. I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions just comment down below. I'm happy to answer them and see you very soon.